Hey everybody, it's Oleg here with Guild Mortgage and I'm really excited today. And the reason for that is I have Jay Fletch with me, which is from Woodbury, Minnesota. And he is a real estate agent and a core coach. And um, what we wanna talk about is what every agent right now is after, which is listings. And I think everybody struggles with their conversion. And Jay has one of the highest conversion ratios that I've ever seen a realtor have um, from a listing appointment to actually having the client sign, um, sign with him and, and list their home. And so what I wanted to do is I wanted Jay to share his strategy um, and how he's able to achieve an 88% conversion ratio. And so I'll, I'll give it over to Jay right now. He's a monster producer, has a big team, uh, does a lot of volume. And so anyway, Jay, uh, thank you for, uh, thank you for uh, taking the time today and I'll kind of let you take it from here. Uh, if, if you don't mind me asking, maybe you could share some numbers with us and then go into your strategy. Yeah, yeah. Well, I thank you. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. I've watched, uh, I watched you from the audience and the core grow and you're highly respected among everybody, so it's an honor to be able to jump in and help you out here. Thanks, so, Jay. Uh, as year to date, uh, I primarily do listing appointments at this point in, in my career, my team. So year to date, I've gone on 72 appointments. As of today, 64 of those were signed. Of those 72 appointments, I've only lost two. Six of them are undecided at this point, and I do feel I have the opportunity to pick up another six, as long as my follow-up stays tight, uh, every day that goes by, I could potentially lose those. So those are the numbers on listing appointments yet today. To give your agents out there kind of an ideal, my team looks like we're eight total. Uh, we do about 70 million in volume, and we do about 230 to 240 transactions a year. And we are located, as you said, Woodbury, Minnesota, just 30 miles east of Minneapolis. Average sales price is about 360. So. So as far as the listings, uh, there's a lot of things to go into. I mean, it's a big, broad area. We could talk about the leads. The better the leads, obviously, the better the conversion. But if you look at our process from start to contract, it really starts with the initial phone call. So I don't set my own listing appointments. I have my, my staff, my team set the appointment. And then that way they can go through a questionnaire. So they set the appointment. They go through a questionnaire. Typically, they're setting the appointment out a few days in order for us to get a pre-listing packet. The pre-listing packet, and I'll give you a sample of what's in our packet so you can share that with your agents. But our pre-listing packet essentially sells us or sells me before I get there. So really, it's really tough to get in front of a potential seller and brag about yourself. But then again, if you're not talking good things about yourself, I guarantee your competition is not. So I have a hard time telling a seller face-to-face -face how great I am. So the pre-listing packet does that. It sells us ahead of time. It tells us how great we are. So that way, when I can come into that appointment, I can be just like any other friend that they have. I can be like any other person that they talk to, and I can be humble, and I can be knowledgeable, and I can be hungry, but I don't come across as arrogant or conceited. Can I see that? So you want me to kind of keep going on how this plays out then? Yeah, absolutely. So maybe what you could t do is tell us what is in your actual uh, pre-listing packet. I know you had mentioned that you send them a lot of information also on their home as well. Yeah. So some of the things in our pre-listing packet to give you an idea, and like I said, I'll give you a breakdown. So the first thing is our cover leveler. Our cover letter basically tells them, it leads them. People want to be led. They want to know what's next. They want to know what the next process is. So our cover letter basically say, get your key out. It says, here's what Jay's coming to do. He's coming to sign this up. Fill out the seller's disclosure. Get your payoff out. Get your mortgage information. Know all your utilities. So I want them to gather all that research ahead of time. So this way, when I show up at the appointment and I see a key sitting at the table, I know they've read that cover letter, and I know that they, they expect me to sign them. So also in there is a seller's disclosure. So I want them to fill out information about that property. Also our pre-listing packets in different shapes and sizes and colors and textures. So when they open, it's not going to be like anything else that they're getting from anybody else. So, you know, a lot of times we'll include 
letters of the heart. I'll, I'll include my most recent letter of the heart. I'll include like our EOS. I'll include information where they can get onto our app. I'll include a move up brochure, telling them if they're gonna sell their house and go into new construction where I can help them out there. I include our all about you form, which is also, a, we call it an all about you client intake form. This form allows them to fill out things that I want to know about them. So if I have to start following up, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna know a little bit more about them and kind of tailor the way they're. It includes an article about us, and the whole thing about the article about us. Main reason about the article it talks about the team and our philosophy. We also include a resume, so the resume just kind of at a glance. We call it at a glance, and to break down our resume, we include the top ten reasons to work with us. We include a picture of everybody on the team and their phone numbers, because all these things we're gonna I'm gonna talk about at the listing presentation. I include selling your home. I also include a breakdown of what the municipality have is about their pulse. I like to show them that we've already looked at it. So our municipality are real lists. A lot of real, real, lot of, lot of realtors have access to real lists. We print that out for them and send that to them. We also send them their previous MLS listings. We also send them any pictures we can find. We send them a flyer of their house on one of our flyers, so they already know what it looks like if you were pushing that out there already. We drive by and do it. So all this comes to them prior to me getting there, and we typically like to get it there. If the appointment's tomorrow, my staff will hand deliver it and drop it off at their house on the way home from work. If the appointment's a couple days, we'll overnight it. If the appointment's a week from now, we'll just regular mail it, but they will get it. If I don't think they're gonna be home, we will drop it off at their work. So like if we schedule an appointment for five o'clock tonight, it will be dropped off at three o'clock before they leave work because I want them to see it before I get there. Right. So that the pre-listing, I know a lot of agents don't do a pre-listing packet. A lot of them talk about doing it, think about doing it. The pre-listing packet is like the silent assassin to your conversion. You have a much higher conversion ratio if that gets out. And how many people fill out the, the, you know, the information before you get there versus the ones that don't? I mean, I'm, I'm assuming not, you know, maybe 20% of them fill it out. Well, here's what I found in my experience is this. Every couple has two types of people. Most of them have left brain, right brain couple, right? What you find out is the analytical type in the relationship almost always fills it out. <laughs> and so, so that's the one that's like, they just, they do what they're told, they like checklists, they fill it out, so they fill it out, it's filled out. I would say it's, I would say it's more than 50% of the time it's already filled out. All right, cool. And so now, now you show up for the appointment, they got all this stuff, they know, they know that you've done a lot of research on their house, um, and, and, and you're, you're going in knowing a lot of data that most people would have to research after the appointment. So you show up for the appointment, how does it go from there? So I show up with appointment, like I said, I have a lot of data on me already. Where, and so in, in real estate, most agents will talk about a one-step, two-step appointment. I'm primarily a one-step, because in my experience, if I'm a one-step, I'm not giving another, I'm not giving one of my competition the opportunity to, to take it if I do a two-step. So one-step, you try to get everything that day, two-step, you're coming back. Now, if I don't, have a lot of information about the property I will do a two-step but most of the time I have enough information so the first thing I do is I verify my information so I kind of go through them I go through that information with them I say hey let's go through the information I have because I want to make sure that you didn't finish off your basement and I didn't know about it I want to make sure you didn't add an extra room and I didn't know about it see in real list in our municipalities if they finished off their basement it's going to show up in the information we can track from the municipality if they pull the permit. So if I get there and they finished off their basement and I didn't know about it, it's probably because they did it without filling the permit. So I verify the information I have. Then I ask to go through the property to get more information. And the reason why I go through the property before I start talking about marketing or price or anything like that, because I don't want them to say, well, you haven't even seen our house. So I, I say, hey, let's, let me set everything down at the kitchen table. I always ask them to get me a glass of water or something to drink. Uh, because it shows, again, taking the lead and authoritative. I say, hey, could I get a glass of water? Yes. So if they get you a glass of water, they're starting to 
you know, they're starting to answer questions. They're starting to get you what you need. So then I go, let's go through the house. According to my tax records, you have three bedrooms on the main level. Yes, we do. According to this, you have a full bath. And I go through. As I'm going through the house, my main objective is to verify the information I have. Usually it's right. My second main objective is to gain rapport. So I'm looking at their pictures. I'm looking at their kids' toys. And I'm trying to look for things that become me too. It's like, oh, you guys ski. Me too. Oh, you guys look like you have a little girl. Man, my little girl's in Barbies too. I'm looking for things that we can connect. Got it. So okay. that's, I'm looking for rapport things. Got it. Well, that's how we go through the house there. Yep. All right. And so after you've gone through the house, then I'm assuming you're sitting down and you're talking about numbers with them. Yeah. So usually I don't talk about numbers until I go through marketing. And the reason that is, is there's one train of thought where it's, where it's ideal. It's like, who cares what I think your house is worth if you're not going to hire me? You should really only care about what the agent that you're going to hire thinks your house is worth. So I typically go through marketing. And so I go through our marketing plan, how we do marketing, what we do. And what, there are a couple key things I say in the beginning. One, one key thing I always say is, the last thing I'm going to do is ask you to sign something because that disarms them. And I'm being real blunt honest with them. The last thing I'm going to do is ask them to sign a listing contract. So I just say, oh, the last thing I'm going to do tonight is ask you to sign something. So now I disarmed them. Yep. The next thing I do is I go into tonight. I, tonight I'm going to ask you to make a decision if I'm the right agent for you to hire. So I'm, I'm planting that seed that I want them to hire me. And I say, you should never choose an agent based on two things. You should never choose an agent based on what they think your house is worth and how much they cost. Because those two things can be manipulated. You should base an agent on their marketing plan, how long you get well with them, how knowledgeable they are. Do you think, this, you, think you can work with this person? So that's, that's kind of the preference I go. Then I go through our marketing. I spend most of the time talking about the team and how there's so many things that can fall through the crack, how it's important to have a team. And, you, and then I relate it to sports. You know, I say, you know, Tom Brady's got one of the best quarterbacks ever lived. He probably wouldn't have as many rings if he didn't have a team. And, and so then I talk about the team, then I talk about our marketing. And then at somewhere in there, then I'll go into pricing of their home. And I get a small, I'll get like a small commitment from them. Say, does everything sound good or, I'll go, does, does it seem like we're on the right track? Does it seem like I could be the right agent for you? If I get a nod or a yes or anything like that, then I go into, do you want to see what your equity position is? And then I'll start going into pricing. Okay, got it, got it. And so then at that point, um, how do, so at that point, you guys are talking about the marketing, you're talking about their house, how you'd market their house. You've already told them, you know, you, you know, you never want to choose an agent based on what they think their, your home is worth or how much they cost. And so what is your typical close look like? At what point are you closing them on? Hey, let's go ahead and sign this. Let's go ahead and list your home. How does that look like? So I primarily use three to four closes and a lot of times I'll piggyback off them. So the closes I like to use is one is the Goldilocks close. I like to give them three different options. I typically use that one on pricing. So I'll say, hey, to get all the services we need, here's what price we are. But we offer this one and this one as well. That's one close. Another is a close, the assumptive close. I just assume they're going to be working with me. We, I've already got the nod. We're already this far. They've already filled out the paperwork. I'm starting to fill out their listing agreement. And then really the two that probably that work really well together is one of the biggest fears in the marketplace right now with sellers is they're going to sell their home and they're going to not have something to buy and they're going to quote unquote be homeless. So I use a non-committal try it with the back it up with the guarantee. And that really works like this. I say, you know what? I don't understand that you have that fear. A lot of my clients have that same fear. Really what we find out if we can get the price they want for their house or if we can get the timing we want or if we can get the buyer to give you a rent back agreement or if we can give the buyer to get you a contingency that allows you to shop for suitable housing, would you still sell your home right now? Well, yes, I would. Then let's just do this. Let's try it. Let's go ahead and go through all of the paperwork 
and let's try a pre-marketing before we go live and let's see what kind of response we get from the market on your house. And, and then I back it up with my guarantee. And the lines I use on my guarantee work like this. I say, Oleg, what you're gonna find in real estate is if you t interview 10 different real estate agents, what you're gonna find is most of those 10 will say this. Their marketing plan is put a sign in your ground, put it on the MLS and pray for someone to sell it. So our marketing plan's not like that. In fact, I'll go as far as to say, you try putting your home on the market right now with me today. If you're not happy, you can cancel this contract at any point in time you want. You got my guarantee. And then I also say, I want you to know if you do do decide to opt to take that, you will not be able to use my staging or my pre-inspection or my photos, you know, but you won't have to pay for those things either. I'll be out that money, you won't be. So I give them a very non-committal try it, but interesting enough, there is not a, there's not a try it listing agreement. They, so they sign the actual listing agreement that binds them to everything. Got it. So you're pretty much saying, hey, let's see how it goes. I'm still going to offer all the services that I offer. And if for whatever reason you don't like the terms of what, you know, of, of a buyer that's going to be making an offer on your home, if they don't accept your terms, then cancel at any time. You have nothing to lose. So you're not necessarily, they don't feel obligated that as soon as I sign that listing appointment, I have to sell my home or I have to sell it within a certain amount of months or whatnot. It's more of a, hey, we're going to go ahead and do this. And if you could cancel at any time, no strings attached, you don't pay for anything, you're not out of anything. Would yeah. you think that that's kind of the key to your um, success on having an 88% uh, meeting to uh, listing, um, assigned listing agreement uh, application ratio? Yeah, yeah. It, it's definitely one of, the key, one of the key parts of it because this way, essentially, they're – I'm locked. I'm comfortable because I'm locking them up. I don't have to worry about a competitor coming in there. They're comfortable because they're, you know, this is the first night they met me. So, you know, they're comfortable saying, I don't know if this, everything this guy says sounds great. I don't know if he's going to deliver on it. So then what happens is that, that they sign that we go forth. We're all happy before I leave their driveway, before my lights are no longer shining on their house. I call them up and, and I just do the honor call that we're touched with the core. And I call him up and I say, hey, old oh, it's Jay Fletch calling. I usually get this. Oh, did you, did you forget something or what's wrong? I say, hey, no, no, nothing's wrong. You know, there's 18,000 real estate agents in our marketplace. Yeah, it's a lot. And we just, you know, I'm honored. My team's honored. We're just so appreciated you decided to work with us today. And so I just wanted you to know that. We're honored. We don't take it lightly. We're going to go to work for you. So I hang up that call. That's always going over well. They will get a thank you card in the mail the next day because we mail it out. We mail it out the night I go, they'll get it the next day. It'll be a thank you card. And then I hand the file off to my team. Now, everything I promise them when I'm sitting there, my team starts it the next day. So all of a sudden my team calls them to set up the staging appointment. They call them to set up the pre-listing. They call them to set up these other appointments. The one, the one that they wait to set up is always the photographs because they wait for the staging. And so what happens is, and if you look at closes, this is what they call the puppy dog close. Puppy dog close is where they give you a dog and they tell you to take it home. And they say, you know, just have it for the weekend. Sure. And by the time Monday rolls around, you're in love with this dog. You can't give it back. So you buy it. Absolutely. So what happens here is they start to get in love with Natalie. You know, they love Natalie. They love Salve. They fall in love with my stager. And I just keep getting all these compliments. Man, your stage was really professional. Oh, man, Natalie's taking really great care of us. And all of a sudden what happens is they start to feel like, man, I hired the right agent. They said he was going to do this. And then we go to the market. And then we do if they really are concerned about things like, you know, selling their home and not having one. I just make a note in the file that I have to make sure that I got either protection in there for them or I got to make sure and I'm explaining to them that by taking this offer, they're getting this much more compensation in this market that maybe they should be okay with being homeless for a couple months. <laughs> or sure, maybe renting, they'll... renting out or whatnot. So yeah. most, people, most people would rather, most people make decisions based off fear versus faith. And the biggest fear decision that they have, one of the first fear is they have the fear that they're going to be homeless. But the second fear that's even more powerful than that, they don't want to make two house payments. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, um, Jay, thank you for sharing your strategy. If anybody wants Jay's listing, um, uh, pre-listing packet and presentation, 
uh, send, send me an email or shoot us a text. Uh, me and Yuri will send it over to you, my marketing guy, Yuri. And, um, and then hopefully you could follow Jay's strategy and also have an 88% um, appointment to listing conversion ratio. So thanks for watching. Thanks, Jay, for, uh, for, for taking the time. And if you need me or the team, you can reach us at 425-478-7676. Have a great day, everybody.